Welcome to Candidates Night, everybody. It's been really fun to have some kind of casual conversation. Um, so we are now going to open up to our formal program. Uh, for those of you who may not know, I'm Madeline Hennessy. I'm the chair of the Board of Selectmen, and uh, this event is sponsored by the board. Uh, our candidates this evening are Ashley Randall, who is running for the school board. Uh, Ashley has been a good member of the school board, and um, I can't say that I, I guess it's prejudicial, but I'm going to say it anyway. I'm supporting her. <laughs> uh, Mark Travis is a long-term, well, lifelong, lifelong, every, almost every day of your life has been lived in West Bath, I understand and um, has expressed interest in running on, for the Board of Selectmen before he serves on the Budget Advisory Committee as well right now. And Suzanne, um, I'm going to end Grayson, right? And tell, would you say it, your name properly? Because I want people to understand better. And, and Grayson, but with an E at the end. I don't know. <laughs> and Grayson, <laughs> with an E. No worries. Well, you're halfway there. <laughs> I understand that for people who have O's and N's, it's an important distinction. It doesn't hurt my feelings at all. It's my husband's name. <laughs> <laughs> so what I would like to do um, is have a more or less informal discussion of, as your, about your hopes and dreams for the town of West Bath. Um, but first, uh, I'd like you kind of to say a little something about who you are and your hopes and dreams for the town of West Bath. And Ashley, as you're an incumbent, um, why don't you go first? You're also first at the table from my, from my direction. So thank you. So my name is Ashley Randall. I have lived in West Bath going on 13 years now. I have two kids in this uh, West Bath school, a fourth grader and a first grader. Um, this would be my second term on the school board. And I just am very proud of the work that we've accomplished in the last three years. And I would just like to continue on that track um, with more of a focus on community involvement and getting our kids into our community and our community into our school. I think we've done some great work, um, including being credentialed as a EL school. And would just like to really follow along on that path. Mark? Uh, I'm Suzanne Andreessen. I've been a resident of West Bath nearly 20 years with my husband Scott and my son Tyler. Um, I decided to uh, put my hat in the ring for the selectman position as I want to give back to the community. I, I've really been involved um, in some things with the Boy Scouts. I've been a uniform leader for 11 years and my son recently became an Eagle Scout so I can now transition out of that and into something that's um, more local to our community. Um, I I uh, think we have a terrific school platform. Um, we have a unique position that some of the communities don't have, where we have an elementary school that feeds comfortably into our partnership with the RSU one, and also accommodates vouchers for students that are outside of that or perhaps want to explore other opportunities that don't meet within their educational spectrum. Um, and I appreciate our fiscal responsibility. We've been able to take our mill rate from 11.1 .1 down to 10.5, and I'd like to um, continue that momentum. We've got a great community and I want to get more into it. Hi, I'm Mark Travis. I've lived in West Bath my whole life. Um, short and sweet, I'd like to just help out the town and give back to any way I can help. Thank you. Questions? I'm counting on you all to make this a little <laughs> bit longer than a five minute. <laughs> Ashley, since you have experience, what do you foresee as the maybe the couple biggest um, hurdles or things coming up with the school board and with the West Fast School that you anticipate and how would you deal with them? I would say that things are a little bit hard to anticipate as a lot of things are fed to us from the state level and that's the challenges that we've faced in the last few years is the unknown hurdles that we have to face and we have to jump and clear at <laughs> short notice um, with limited funds and trying to be fiscally responsible. Um, there was a ton of new legislation passed that is related to the school system, so just learning how to navigate those things are really important. Um, and then in my time on the school board, I'm part of the facilities committee. 
and we do have a building that is older than some around us. So just trying to balance the needs of a building and take care of it and be responsible while also being fiscally responsible is something that's really important. And a way that we've approached that, and I think it's very successful, is we do phase planning. So instead of waiting until we have an emergency with a ventilator, we've been very proactive in replacing one per year and budgeting for that. Um, same with our floors and our ceilings. We've just tried to take a really responsible, proactive approach to be good stewards of the property that we've been entrusted with. Ashley, are you running unopposed? I am. Okay. Second question is, you said um, something about getting the community involved in the school. Can you give me an example of what that would be? Sure. Um, so in addition to being on the school board, uh, my husband is a deputy fire chief of the West Beth Fire Department. And though I don't, I'm technically a support staff, so an unofficial member of the fire department, um, I'm very involved with that. We had our fire prevention open house last night. And so um, last Friday, my husband and I went to the school as members of the fire department to um, introduce the kids to a firefighter in gear so that they weren't scared and talk to them about what an emergency is versus what it's not. Um, so just opening up more of those discussions instead of having um, different subsections of the town that we live in just all working together as a community. Or if there's any opportunities for the town um, as a whole to work with the school. So that it's not a closed off sort of place that only people that have children in the system are interacting with. Um, we have a celebration of learning two times a year that's part of our uh, curriculum and just seeing I think that in the last few years we've had almost 100 um, percent of the kids in the school had a community member coming to the celebration of learning to see the work that they've done and to see that it's not necessarily a parent or a grandparent um, I went to the summer school um, summer stem celebration of learning and there was staff members of the school that weren't even involved with Summer STEM, they were coming back to see the work that the kids were doing. So just sort of opening it up so that the school isn't necessarily just a place where you go if you have kids there. Thank you. Okay. Other questions? Um, I'm Mark, I understood that you, uh, plan, you serve on the budget committee. Yes. Um, how long have you done that? I believe three years. Three years. And will you be continuing with that? If I'm allowed to. Well, <laughs> okay. I don't know, am I allowed to do both? I think if you're a selectman, you probably just do that and not be on the budget thing. I think so. Oh, okay. I didn't know yeah. if there was a yeah. division there. Yeah. Uh, as if you were on the board, you would as a of course, be welcome to attend all of the meetings. <laughs> yeah. You wouldn't necessarily be a voting member of the committee, but you would certainly be um, allowed, allowed to be at any of the meetings. And your experience uh, from past budget is, uh, is valuable. Mm -hmm. Suzanne. Um, um, how do I say this? What 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 um, professional skills or past professional skills or past experience do you think that you'd bring to this um, position? How much time do I have? <laughs> <laughs> so what do um, you do before okay. today? Well, my husband and I started a deli from the ground up, so I know what it takes to run okay. a business and balance funds and pay bills and make sure that you meet expectations. Um, I have been selling magazine advertising uh, from a home office in West Bath for a very long time. I'm the chief revenue officer of our magazine, and um, we are doing quite well. So I feel I can bring a um, fiscally responsibility um, to that and understand how to run a business. I'm not going to ask Mark that. Well, I, I will ask Mark that. I know a little about Mark, but Mark, what? skills do you have that you think that you would bring to this selectman position? I'm not sure what I need for skills to be a selectman because I really don't know what the selectman job entails. It's going to be a complete learning curve. So I don't know how I 
I've seen them be patient with other people that they brought to the committee. So I think that that can happen. Darrell. There's always a learning curve. <laughs> <laughs> I'm banking on it. <laughs> Well, Mark, I don't know much about you. What is your profession or your work now? I drive a school bus. Okay. I drive in Georgetown. Uh -huh. And you? Oh, you're a the fisherman? Boat. Mechanic. Plow snow. <laughs> Handy. <laughs> Busy. For all three of you, uh, pick the order that you would like to respond. Um, Two-part question. What is it that most excites you or that you like the best about West Bath? And then what problem might you see and how would you solve it? I'll start with Ashlyn. <laughs> um, so what I have learned being in this on the school board for the last three years, and I'm very hopeful for the town of West Bath. Um, the kiddos that we have coming out of our school are very inspiring from kindergarten, pre-K, all the way up through. Um, they're doing really good things, and they're really good humans, and that's very hopeful for me. Um, the problem that I see and how we're trying to combat that problem is the community involvement and trying to um, remove the separation of the school is not relevant to me because I don't have children in it. Um, and so getting the, pe getting the town involved in coming into our building and seeing the work that our kids are doing, sending our kids out into the community. Um, they are, the fifth graders go to Maine Maritime Museum and they build boats uh, every week. And the feedback that we've gotten from that is amazing. Um, we've had people in the community say, I can tell a West Bath kid. Like it's become sort of a term that they can, their behaviors, and we're teaching them to be good citizens. And so I would say that even though it's a problem, I am very hopeful that there is a solution, and I really want to be a part of that. Mark? Oh, no, I'll leave this with you. <laughs> Two-part question, what is it that you like the most about West Bath? And the second part of the question is, what problem do you see and how would you solve it? Well, I've lived in West Bath my whole life, so I don't really have anything to compare it to. I mean, West Bath's a great community. Everything I've been involved with is always good people. I've been part of the fire department at one point in time. Um, I got a plow contract in West Bath. And people I have to deal with with that are very good people. Um, problems in West Bath? I'm not sure. I don't know if I've ever seen any problems that is I'm aware of. Okay. I think West Bath is a really good close-knit community. Um, it's, it's a small community, but um, we're all in it together. Um, I think there's certainly an opportunity, I wouldn't call it a problem, but I call it an opportunity for um, to try and attract some additional businesses here. Um, we don't have enough tax base to support some of the things that we'd like to do. And I think that maybe finding a way to attract some more local business could be very beneficial for us. And uh, follow up on that, where would the businesses locate? Along the Old Bath Road or the or what they call State Road or Foster's Point Road or? Anywhere, I, you know, I am certainly new at this. Um, I don't know where the commercial zoning is um, from that perspective. Um, but certainly try and develop some of those opportunities. Um, I think there's a lot that we could do here, and that we just don't have a lot of business. <clears throat> we got a group hub coming, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> According to the Times record today, all this is Korean. Yes, newspaper. 
Huh. I have a question for all three of you, and obviously the answers are directed in a different way. If you, if we could dream a little, and you woke up tomorrow, <clears throat> and a business or something came into town, and suddenly we had an influx of revenue that we hadn't anticipated, what would be your first priority to spend it on, if you would spend it at all? Hmm. Um, I think from my perspective, seeing on the school board the last few years that we've gone through, I would like to maybe bulk up some of our capital accounts that we've had um, to have some safety nets. That would be a priority. Um, a second pro priority of mine would probably be to expand some programming. We have a lot of positions at our school that are part-time positions um, as far as uh, PE teachers and music teachers and things, um, art teachers and things along those lines. So to be able to expand those to five day a week positions I think would be a great thing. Um, and then just being able to have that buffer to be more comfortable with um, repairs to our building or maintenance to our building so that maybe instead of having to knock things out one at a time we could just take care of them all and have a clean slate. But I think that the way that things are going are sustainable now but it's always nice to have more. <coughs> How much money we talk? Three hundred thousand dollars. Three hundred thousand. What would you spend it on, or would you spend it? Three hundred thousand. When you're trying to do something in a town, I don't think three hundred thousand really goes very far. <laughs> Being on the budget, it, I mean, you could spread spread it through the town, make everything a little bit better. But what about things like roads? Do we do enough in our road maintenance? Um, roads would definitely be a good priority to fix. Is there are uh, some pretty horrible roads in West Bath? They're coming around. They're getting better. Roads definitely could use some repairs. Suzanne? Um, I'm not adverse of saving it for what we, if we have an expense coming our way. Um, it, it's, I'm sure there's some out there, but we need to prioritize how it's going to be spent and not just um, spend it because we have it. But you don't have any preconceived notion of a need that would, would, would get your attention? Not at this point, I don't. I'm too new at this to really determine um, what the appropriate measure would be. That's fair. <laughs> I've, I've got one more question for Ashley. And um, you talk a lot about the, the excitement of our K through five school. Mm -hmm. I guess it's pre K through five now. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and I share your enthusiasm. It's, it's, we have, we have a great leader, <laughs> and, and we have a lot of very good teachers, and we've got families that care, mm -hmm. and that's a great combination. When they leave West Bath mm -hmm. Elementary School, they go to middle school and then high school somewhere else, most probably to RSU 1. Mm -hmm. um, um, what <coughs> I know we have budgetary responsibility to pay for that, mm -hmm. for those students. What influence do you as a school board member have to, to influence change or encourage change or improvement in things you see beyond fifth grade? I think that having the kids in our building through K through five, we have a tremendous opportunity to sort of lay that foundation that whether they're in our building or not can follow them to 6 through 12, and the families are still with them through 6 through 12. So I think that while we are limited into sort of where we can send them and the opportunities that we can send them, we can equip them to thrive wherever they are sent. And then if we really focus on that community sort of aspect, that's what's going to carry them through the 6 through 12, even though they might not be in our building. They'll have the community and they'll have the foundations. But, but we don't have any, we at West Bath citizens don't have any real influence on programming and things that happen right. at the middle school or high school. Right. Yeah, 
I'm not sure how to facilitate that better, but it would be something that I would definitely be willing to have some discussions about to see if it's something that we. It's hard, it's sort of hard because it's we hard left to, we left we, we did leave, yeah and um it's it's hard to go into somebody else's realm and tell them how to do things because while something works for us in our school at K through five that may not work in RSC one schools it may not work in Brunswick schools so just although we might not have a immediate tangible solution um, there may be conversations. I don't think it's a bad thing though to, to have if they I think having a voucher program um, gives students a chance to explore other avenues. Mm -hmm. There's charter schools or things. Not all students are cut from the same mold to fit into those particular schools mm -hmm. and they can develop their own educational style and we can foster that. And, and that's actually a really strong point for West Bath is our students can go wherever they feel they fit in best. Mm -hmm. Oh, not all of them. 25% <laughs> yeah. on the voucher program. And that's limited only for 10 years. And then it's up to us at that point to determine where and how we use the voucher system. And we have a great partnership with RSU1, but it allows other kids to um, raise their hand and request a voucher and then explore what suits them for their educational style. I heard the other day that the population of students in the West Bath School was decreasing or wasn't increasing as quickly. Is that true and is that a worry for the rest of the 10 years where we have the agreement with our issue uh, one on how we're going to send enough students and not have to pay for a place but not a student? Uh, if I remember correctly, our numbers are comparable to what they were about 10 years ago which makes sense considering that our enrollments the last few years have included grandfathered children from RSU 1 and those ones sort of going out of our system. And so now we're sort of stabilizing to get a true picture of what the West Bath school population really is. Um, as far as forecasting 10 years from now, I don't, I can't say. Um, I do know that unofficially I've heard um, just being a parent at the school, people are moving to West Bath because of our school system. Um, and I don't know if that's going to continue because we do have a really good thing going on. So I wouldn't dare um, forecast in the next 10 years, but I'm not worried. <laughs> we, we had a 10 year agreement with RSU1 for taking our students at a fixed price. Mm -hmm. How many years into that 10 year agreement are we? Uh, three or four, I believe. We have an expert. Emily, how many years are we at the end of that? We're just starting year number five. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. Do you have any do you have any ideas or options or thoughts about trying to recruit kids into the um, West Bath Elementary from other districts? Uh, we do have a tuition option. Um, and I think that that provides opportunities, but I also, I like that our school is a small community school. And so, I don't think that there's anything wrong with the way that things are. I don't know if I would want to, I personally would be an advocate for exploring that option because I like how things are now. Well, one of the reasons I'm curious about the school so much, even though I know you're running on post, <laughs> it is, what, 62 or 60 some mm -hmm. percent of our budget, mm -hmm. our annual expenditure of tax money, so it's a big deal. Absolutely. And I've learned a lot in the last three years of being on the school board um, that unfortunately a lot of that is out of our control. And that's one thing that I would really like to see our community get more involved in as far as like what I was saying um, about the legislation legislation earlier is so much of it's directed at the state level um, that I think that those conversations are really important to happen not necessarily just looking at our school budget and wondering why it's going up or down in the town of West Bath but that's a, a larger scale conversation that needs to happen with our state representatives.
Unfunded mandates are often not our friend. <laughs> Especially being a minimum receiver. Yeah. That's one thing. Does, does anybody have any ideas on how to um, influence the legislature or um, possibly have a group of people who constantly represent the town at um, being an advocate for West Bath and an advocate for ideas that would benefit us as decreasing or stopping new unfunded mandates. And that's that's one that could all, all of you could answer. I don't have the experience to comment on that at this point with the, with the mandates and the educational programs. Um, I'm certainly prepared to look into it, but I, I don't have a history on it at this point. Same here. I know that we've had um, conversations. Um, one of our representatives has uh, attended a few of our meetings, but it's sort of just to say to us, keep up trying. <laughs> so, yeah. I am welcome. Yeah, so I think it's uh, a conversation that needs to happen. Um, but on a more, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? More people than just the, the couple of people that sit on the school board or attend the school board meetings. I think it's a a town-wide thing that certainly would lend support. Okay, one of the things I find is we're newer residents and we love being here and we're strong advocates for West Bath and probably 95% of the people we talk to locally don't have any understanding that West Bath is a separate community. Mm -hmm. How could we toot our own horn and one thing through real estate to make people understand West Bath is so attractive, particularly to young families, or in other aspects where people would understand that we actually are here and what we have to offer. I don't know how that would be. I think with us, um, and with my little ones, I think that's part of the community initiative. Um, a couple of years ago, for Valentine's Day, instead of doing parties at in the classrooms, each class picked a random act of kindness. And so my daughter was in second grade at the time, and we went and we stood in downtown Bath and handed out flowers that the second grade class had made. And when people are like, where are you from? Like, this is West Bath. So just having those conversations and getting people out and about, I don't know if there's a, a brochure that could explain the greatness, or if it's just something that you have to see and you have to witness firsthand. But I think that those sort of little acts are going to be what sort of advertises for us. Uh, for all three of you, is there an opportunity as we um, complete our uh, commitment to RSU and do we have a continuing commitment to the um, school unit or would we be prepared to market uh, our students and also our revenue you know, to other school districts? Uh, so whether the school board will get involved in that or the selectmen and uh, have other school districts express interest in the West Bath students as they uh, leave fifth grade. Our son is tuition to Brunswick. Um, he went to St. John's through sixth grade, and we chose to keep him in that community because it was the community that he was in Cub Scouts and Boy Scouts with, and most of his friends were from there. And um, I think Brunswick is very interested, should we pursue that avenue to have some of the kids um, come there, uh, I, and I think we can certainly market that. That's um, an opportunity that we could um, chat with several surrounding communities and and see what their thoughts are on how they'd like to support our community and attract us to go to them because it's they, it, to them it's a gift. Um, we're not in their budgetary plans, and um, so we hold value in those vouchers, and we could certainly substantiate benefit from that um, in, in partnering with some schools outside of our fifth grade level. So there's, I think there's an opportunity for us there. I agree. Still stabilizing from the <laughs> withdrawal process and seeing what that looks like on the budget to have the sort of next transition conversations, but I don't see any harm in exploring opportunities. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> we'll discuss this later. <laughs> Quiet right <ride> home. <laughs> oh dear. Are there other questions? 
I think we've had some good answers. Um, and thank you for all three of you for your interest in continuing work for the community of West Bath. Just a, an editorial comment that people have not known that West Bath was a distinct mm -hmm. uh, community is a long-standing issue. Mm -hmm. I remember as many as more than half a century ago when my father was being introduced at various public events, he would make sure he emphasized West Bath. And people would say, oh, I didn't know it was a separate community. Even the post office doesn't know. <laughs> I argue with people when I place an order online. I said, oh, it says it's Bath Man. I'm like, no, it's West Bath Man. <laughs> 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 yeah. Maybe we're going to get our own post office. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> Yeah. No, we don't. We can we still don't. get our own zip code and use the bank. When I lived in South Dakota, in a community that was one mile square with about a hundred residents, we had our own post office that was part time. And we have more than that, and we're bigger. <laughs> Our postal delivery is part time. And they don't come in a truck, so <laughs> <That's true. laughs> the post office can manage more than one zip code in the same post office. Well, the post it's office manages. I have, I have nothing bad to say about the post no, office. That those people can get so many letters to the same place and to the right place at the right time, given people's handwriting, I think is nothing short oh, of miraculous. But it would be nice if we had a room zip code. <laughs> yes, but I'm not running this year. Whoops. <laughs> Thank you all for coming, and I really um, appreciate your input. I appreciate your interest in the community, and uh, continue, I hope to continue working with all three of you in the capacities in which you serve the community. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.